Is this the end of the bison in Edmonton? The fourth overall experiment. The player who dropped from a projected top three standing all the way to... Oh boy, I was about to say Ken Holland. No, Peter Shirelli's lap. Let's talk today about Jesse Poliarvi, because when it comes to this player, he has been a guy that we've been chronicling over the past few years, mostly due to a lack of consistency at the NHL level, as much as I hate to say it. So, as we had noted, Poliarvi, fourth overall pick of the 2016 NHL entry draft, the story really does start there, because he was supposed to be a lot better than fourth. He was ranked a unanimous third overall behind Patrick Laine and Austin Matthews heading into that 2016 selection. Why? Because in the Finnish Liga, this guy was an absolute bison. He was a power forward, two-way capabilities. He could score. He could create plays. He was an all-around monster. And he really did showcase himself off in that year's World Juniors, where as a 17-year-old, he had 17 points in seven games. Certainly not bad in the slightest. And as a result, when you saw the Columbus Blue Jackets take Pierre-Luc Dubois, third overall instead of Pugliarvi, a lot of fans on the West Coast, like myself, a lot of fans of the Calgary Flames, and a lot of fans elsewhere in California were saying things like, Crap, man! How do the Oilers do this? They lost the lottery, they got the fourth overall pick, and they still come away with a consensus top three player in Pugliarvi. And unfortunately, he really did not pan out in the way that a lot of Oilers fans thought he would especially right off the bat. Now, he had a 20-point season in 2017-18 in his draft plus two years, so after spending some time in Bakersfield, he had that season. But it wasn't really ever as smooth as a lot of Oilers fans wanted it to be when it came to Pugliarvi's progression. He took some time away from the team, he abandoned the Oilers and went back to the Finnish Liga, where he was a good player, with all things considered, but at the same time, he kind of has to be a really good player if he's going from NHL hockey to the Finnish Liga, right? Because the Liga is a step down from the National Hockey League. Nevertheless, though, he was a good player for Karpat, was under a point per game in 2019-20, also suited up for Team Finland at the World Championships. He then started out 2020-2021, the shortened NHL season in the Finnish Liga once again, where he was under a point per game, and then he came back to Edmonton. Now, it was a pretty big deal when Pugliarvi made his return to the Oilers because a lot of fans, not just in Edmonton, but all over the hockey world, were welcoming this guy back with open arms. Even though Pugliarvi wasn't the best player out there, and even though he didn't progress in the way that a lot of fans thought he would, he still had a bubbly personality, his English is quite frankly hilarious, and you just knew that this was the type of player that... The fans, the media, the other Oilers ended up just loving to death because, hey, he's just a cool dude. And it was great seeing him return to the Oilers last year, put up 25 points in 55 games played, so half a point a game. He was on pace for just about 37 points. And we would all be asking ourselves heading into the next season, okay, this has to be the make it or break it year. Because Pugliarvi, his contract is expiring as an RFA. He is making $1.175 million. He's only 24 right now. And come the 2022 offseason, this is really going to be the time to decide what the future holds for Pugliarvi in Edmonton. Now, he scored 36 points in 65 games, which isn't bad. Do the math on that. 36 divided by 65 multiplied out by 82. He was on pace for 45 points. So, definitely not bad. But in the postseason, when the Oilers went to the Western Conference Finals, Pugliarvi only had three points in the 16-game sample. Now, that in isolation isn't the worst news in the world. You know, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl were going out there scoring the lights out. Evander Kane really came out here and just destroyed worlds with the amount of goals that he scored. You also had clutch performances from guys like Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Zach Hyman, also getting on the board there too. But for Pauli Yarvi, especially as a player whose contract was expiring, it was a lot more disappointing to see him not produce than some of the other players in the rest of the Oilers lineup. Take a look at this tweet over here by Daniel Nugent Bowman. Ken Holland said this about Pugliarvi as well. I think he's lost his confidence. I've got to sort out Jesse. Is Pugliarvi part of the solution for the Oilers? Ken Holland says that's what I've got to sort out. Which is why we have ourselves a conversation that had started up here throughout the Oilers media. This is what Ryan Rashog said on TSN 1260. He says the Oilers at this point are significantly prioritizing Kaylor Yamamoto over Pugliarvi. There is a possibility that the Bison has played his last game in an Oilers uniform. 
And reading the replies to this tweet and seeing what a lot of Oilers fans have to say, this isn't something that I can gather is all too much of a surprise. Now, over the past few months, we've been talking about Puliyarvi in different conversations, saying that, oh, he's revived his career, he's scoring more points, he's doing all this, all that. But another part of Puliyarvi's game that isn't quite accessible when you look at just the points and the total goals and stuff is his off-puck and defensive responsibility. Puliyarvi, back when he was drafted, was supposed to be a two-way monster, a guy who could put up points and who could also play very well along the boards without the puck and in his own zone. For the most part, Puliyarvi now is still kind of good at that, and you could see in the advanced analytics that this is a player that does a really good job when it comes to suppressing scoring opportunities for opposition while creating chances for his own team. He just unfortunately isn't lucky enough, nor, I would say, eager enough to force himself into those situations where he's the one getting the points, he's the one scoring the goals, and he's the one being that threat. Evander Kane was an absolutely lethal goal scorer playing with Connor McDavid, and we saw that right away. For Pugliarvi, when you saw him playing with Connor McDavid, sure, the McDavid line would get more goals than the opposition compared to when other players were playing with McDavid, but McDavid was getting more points because Evander Kane was putting the puck in the net, not necessarily because Pugliarvi was shutting the opposition down. And now you have this idea that the Oilers are prioritizing Yamamoto instead, even though he isn't as big or as strong as Pugliarvi is. Pugliarvi is 6'4", 201 as a right-handed shot. Yamamoto is a lot smaller than that. But when it comes to offensive creativity and offense generation, you could definitely debate that Yamamoto has been a lot more of a dangerous presence out there on the ice comparative to Pugliarvi, who has the size, he has the speed, he has the power, he just doesn't use it as much as he could. It's quite unfortunate because I'd been seeing a lot of discourse saying that, hey, Pugliarvi's this big, powerful, strong dude, he needs to go out there and hit more, and unfortunately he just doesn't display those types of tendencies. Could he go out there and bang bodies and be an effective four-checker by disrupting the opposition on the boards? Yeah, he probably could be, but he just isn't. He's a lot more refined and conservative when it comes to being physical out there, despite the fact that he is a big dude. And on top of that, he isn't scoring as much as you would like him to either, and you have other options and the Oilers that play with these top players like McDavid and actually put the puck in the net, which makes Pugliarvi's name a lot more expendable when you discuss who stays and who goes. Plus the fact that you need to re-sign this player, it makes things a lot more difficult if you're trying to say, okay, this is the player we need next year to win. Man, I hate making this video, because I've been saying the past few years that I really do want this player to succeed, and we know the talent is there, it's just, I don't know what it was. In the 2022 playoffs, he stopped producing, he stopped scoring, he stopped being effective out there. There were so many shifts where it was just dump and chase into the corner, get in deep, try to fight for the puck, lose the puck battle, and then okay, it's the next line's turn, let's go back to the bench. And it's quite a shame because this is mostly a pattern that we saw in the postseason. He was coming back from injury, Pugliarvi was, and immediately after you could see that the effectiveness of possession just did not look the same comparative to when people were making graphs about how Connor McDavid was so much of a better player when he was playing with Yessi compared to when he was playing with Kane because at the end of the day, Kane could put the puck in the net. And so if the Oilers do decide to depart with Pugliarvi and his services, it would make sense to me. I personally still do want to believe in this player because how old is he? He's only 24 years old. There still is some time, not the most time in the world, but some time for him to figure everything out. If you go out there and say, okay, yes, we want to keep you, but we can't give you a significant amount of money because of the production, etc., etc. I mean, he scored at a 45 point pace in the regular season and he had three points in 16 games in the postseason. What exactly is the price tag for somebody like that? Two, three million dollars? Who really knows? You can let me know in the comments all your thoughts about Pugliarvi and the idea that the Oilers might be giving up on this player in turn for keeping Yamamoto because they're both contracts that need re-signings and they're both right-handed right-wing players. So there you go. It's kind of a similarity there. It's just one's bigger, the other's smaller, and one is a lot less offensively productive so you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below when it comes to Pugliarvi, Yamamoto, the idea of the Oilers keeping one over the other. If you were Ken Holland and you had to choose one, who would you keep instead of the other? 
I think a lot of Oilers fans would probably go out there and say they want to keep both because Puliyarv, as we said, he is the lovable bison with the English that isn't really all too great, and he's a fun dude, a smiley dude, and a lot of people around the city love this guy. So I could totally understand if there is an unwillingness to depart from him and his services. But let me know in the comments all your thoughts about that. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. Troll 99 and bye.